You know what I've realized in all the time that I've been doing snappy science? There's actually just a bunch of questions that I probably should have learned the answer to when I was a kid that I just don't know the answer to. So I've decided for the next few episodes, we're going to take some time and learn the answers to some questions that you should already know the answers to. The good thing about this is I'm probably going to give you knowledge that you didn't know and you can stand around the water cooler and be like, hey, did you know? So today we're going to answer the classic riddle. Is that a riddle? We're going to answer the classic question, why is the ocean salty? And if you're like a super smart and you already know the answer to this question, don't switch off just yet because I'm actually going to explain to you as well, what is the saltiest place on earth? And no, it's not the Dead Sea, a smarty pants. Okay, enough ramble. Roll the intro. What's up nerds, it's your bro Tiny Hustler and today we're looking at why is the ocean salty on Snappy Science. Actually, before I get that, you want to see something cool? I realized that my lighting here is broken, so I want to do strobe now. Yep. All right, that's probably damaged your computer screen. So the earth is covered in a lot of water, like stacks of it. And believe it or not, about 97% of it is actually salty. And of that 3% that's left, 2% is actually trapped in ice and soil. So it leaves about 1% in rivers, lakes, and streams that we can actually use as fresh water. And I know today we're doing why the ocean is salty, but wowzers, 1% of fresh water? That means we really need to be looking after our streams and waterways better than we probably already are. Okay, so a bit of simple science. The Earth's water moves in a cycle due to the sun. So the ocean water heats up because of the sun and turns into vapor in the air. This vapor then rises up into the air, eventually it gets to a point where it starts to cool down and fall back down again and forms clouds. Eventually, as it cools more and more, this forms rain, hail, snow, for instance, and this comes down and lands in our lakes and rivers. These lakes and rivers, well, the rivers mostly, these then run back into the ocean and this cycle continues. Now this is where it gets cool. When the rain comes back down, it actually contains chemicals that make it more acidic. It's not acidic enough to turn your face into bacon. And if anybody knows the end of the Raiders of the Lost Ark movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it's strong enough to dissolve the mineral salt that's actually in rocks, the mineral salt in rocks, and this then runs down into rivers and streams. So believe it or not, there is actually salt in rivers and streams, but it's not salty enough that you can taste it. And eventually these salts get carried all the way back to the ocean and the cycle continues. Salts have been running into the ocean from rivers for millions of years, billions even, so the levels in the ocean are like 300 times more than that you would find in a river. Salt also gets into the ocean through hot vents in the ocean floor and underwater volcanoes, but this is not the main reason that the ocean is salty. I guess over time the ocean is just going to get saltier and saltier and at some point we're just going to end up with this pile of white dust. But the answer is actually no because some of this salt is actually removed by algae, some by sea creatures and some actually become sediment on the ocean floor. So it actually creates a bit of a balance in this system that's going on. In warmer areas of earth the ocean is actually saltier because more water actually heats up, turns to vapor and drops back down again making the ocean saltier than in cooler areas. I would argue people living in warmer areas are probably less saltier though. I mean, look at Hawaii, those people seem really happy, like all the time. Naturally, in cooler areas like the South Pole, you have less water turning into vapor, so there's less salt traveling into the ocean. You also have ice caps that are melting into the water that are cooling the water even further, so it's less likely to turn to vapor. Which leads me to some bonus knowledge for today, which is the saltiest place on Earth. And for those of you playing at home, it's not the US Senate. A lot of people think it's the Dead Sea which borders Jordan and Israel. It's actually 10 times saltier than the ocean, but it's still only the fifth saltiest place on earth. And ironically, believe it or not, the saltiest place on earth is actually in Antarctica. And even though I said the water in the South Pole is generally less salty, this area is actually 44% salt. 44%. If I take that 44% and do some beep, 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 beep that's 66% not salt. This salty place is actually called Don Juan Pond and it's only 10 centimeters deep and they don't really know why it's massively salty, but it is completely landlocked so water cannot run out of it. There is actually so much salt in this pond that the water would have to reach negative 53 degrees Celsius to even freeze. Instead, over time, the water that's in the pond evaporates, just leaving massive amounts of salt. Be sure to like and share this vid if you got some value today and hit subscribe if you want more snappy science in your life. You've just been scienced.